Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the battery manager system I've been working on. Um, so the the one kind of uh, uh, more challenging thing about having a lithium ion battery pack is that you need to uh, look after the cells a lot more carefully. Um, in a lead acid battery pack, you know, you can whack around the the batteries and the cells pretty good and uh, they won't give you too much trouble. They're pretty tolerant of abuse. But uh, with a lithium ion battery pack, you have to be a lot more careful. If you overcharge the cells, um, you're pretty much doing damage to them right away. And uh, they'll lose capacity. And uh, in the extreme case, they'll catch on fire. But that's, uh, you got to really do some bad things to them to get that to happen. But uh, yeah, so you just have to look after them a lot more carefully and make sure they're used within their within their ratings or else uh, or else you're gonna have issues with uh, capacity and cycle life and longevity and reliability and all those all those things so yeah so I uh, decided to build my own uh, battery management system because um, I couldn't find a system out there that existed that did exactly what I wanted um, the main things I wanted was I wanted a um, a system that was really uh, modular and flexible so you could use any any number of cells I wanted to use you know if I wanted to use uh, 23 cells I wanted to be able to do that if I wanted it to be you know 20 25 cells in series then I wanted you know I wanted to be able to handle that and I just wanted to be really flexible and um, I wanted it to be able to display all the information on an LCD so I could watch it while I'm driving and uh, you know that'll help you figure out um, how far you have left till till empty, and you know, and I wanted it to control all the relays on the motorcycle too. So when I'm when I first start up start up the bike, I wanted to do all the startup procedure all all automatically. I don't want to have to deal with you know any of that uh, any pre-charge stuff or anything. I just want that to happen uh, automatically. Um, also, I wanted it to when when the battery is um, finished charging, so it's at its max voltage, I wanted it to uh, switch off the charger. So I didn't want to rely on the charger either to you know determine when the pack is charged. I wanted this thing to determine when the pack was charged. So if if one of the cells is fully charged, uh, this thing will shut down the battery charger. So uh, the battery charger can be just pretty much any old you can just pretty much whack on any old power supply and this thing will be just fine because this thing will control the charger so that's that's the really good thing so basically what I have here is a main board and these all these boards you see here in front of you are just uh, prototype versions so they're not they don't look too pretty or anything but everything works so um, so this is the main board and you basically have your 12 volts um, accessory power here, your 12 volts constant, and that will power up all the circuitry in here. Um, there's an ignition signal in the second pin there, and the fourth pin is a uh, charge um, slash run signal, so you can tell the bike whether you know you want to be running it or whether you want to charge it. And the next three are for relays, and uh, th what those do is control the pre-charge relay, the main relay and the charge relay, so the charge, the relay that controls the battery charger. Um, and the next three wires are for the current sensor. So, for the current sensor, I used a, a hall sensor, and it's it's uh, yeah one of these hall sensor closed loop types that you can just put a big bus bar through. And the good thing about these is um, they don't uh, there's no voltage drop or anything associated with them, so. Uh, yeah, um, they're good for uh, high current systems. They're not as accurate as a shunt, but um, yeah, with uh, the amount of current this thing's going to be pulling, I think it'll be more than accurate enough. I just kind of want a ballpark on that. So, uh, so yeah, so this thing, uh, the main board here, uh, here's your main microprocessor, or microcontroller, sorry. It's a uh, Cypress uh, brand microcontroller and it controls the LCD through this connector here. It communicates to all the remotes uh, via an isolated interface here. And here's the, uh, you can see the isolation barrier there, or gap, I guess you could say. There's um, a digital isolator, 
Um, there's a um, isolated DC to DC converter, and whenever power goes off board anywhere, it's fused. Everything is reverse polarity protected, and also um, over voltage protected. Um, there's lots of you know surface mount caps on here. And yeah, that's about it. There's uh, not a whole lot to it, which is kind of what the whole idea was. Try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, so that's the main board. Uh, next up is the LCD. Um, so it, it's, uh, like I said, this is just a prototype, so it doesn't look too pretty or anything right now. But there's uh, three switches on here that you use to access the menus and switch through display modes and stuff. And here's a switch for the backlight, so you can switch the backlight on and off. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, what you can do, I'll probably stand up a little later and I'll show you what it does. There's actually a, I programmed in a really neat thing here, so the, um, all the settings on this thing can be configurable on the fly. So if you want to um, change the high voltage cutoff or the low voltage cutoff, um, you can change that right on the fly, right on this display. So if you want the uh, charger to shut down when if the first cell hits uh, 3.62 volts or something, you can set that exactly on here. So it's, uh, it's really convenient. And you can set the number of cells on here and everything, uh, which in the end are the number of how many, how many remote boards you have. And uh, you can set uh, uh, the LCD contrast too is adjustable on here. And yeah, that's about it Off for the LCD for now. Um, on the remote boards, uh, basically how these work is there's um, just uh, your connected connection to your battery here and there's a uh, really small boost converter on here that boosts the battery voltage up to 5 volts and that's used for all the logic on the board. Um, there's a 12-bit um, analog to digital converter on here with a 0.2% accurate voltage reference so this thing takes pretty darn accurate readings and um, here's your uh, balance resistors so those will bleed off the um, excess charge in your battery pack or in your individual module I guess because there's one of these per module um, this dip switch here actually controls the address of the module of, of this remote sorry so if you if you uh, uh, put this on like you can put this on any battery in the pack and you can change the address to whatever cell you want to designate designate that to. So if you want it to be cell number two, then you put the address to two and on the display it'll show up as cell number two. So it doesn't matter where in the pack it is, it can be hooked up, these things can be hooked up pretty much any way and it doesn't matter. Um, and here's the uh, business end of the isolation, uh, the communications um, Here's a, uh, the same uh, digital isolator and your 10-way ribbon connector. And that's about it. And yeah, these, um, you've each one of these for, you've one of these for each one of your modules in your battery pack. And so if you're, if you have a 24 cell, or if 24 modules, sorry, battery pack, you'll have 24 of these remotes. And each one has an LED to indicate when it's running and also an LED to indicate when it's discharging so you know exactly what's going on all the time so that's perfect and all that data gets sent to the main board and displayed on the display and so you can tell exactly what's going on with your battery pack and that's the whole point is to know what's going on with your battery pack and to make sure um, it's it's used within its specs so yeah that's the general idea um, I got these new boards in so, um, the slightly uh, revision of this design, of course, this is just like the prototype version. These are the actual version that are going to be going on the bike, I think. So, yeah, I'm going to build one of these up. And uh, hopefully I'll have some video of me soldering that up. And, uh, yeah, you'll see, I'll show uh, hopefully this thing running at the end. So, all right.